Hey guys, Nick the Nutter Buster coming at you today. Uh, today we're going to be kind of talking about summertime uh, tree prep for saddle hunting in particular, although a lot of this kind of applies if you're using a conventional, you know, lock-on stand as well. Um, so right now turkey season's kind of wrapped up, starting to heat up. Um, it's really too hot and too unpleasant and it's too far after season to do a lot of scouting. I've already got most of that done during the February, March, April period. Um, so now I've got a lot of new spots. Uh, that I know that I want to hit based on you know this sign that I've seen you know postseason and some of the sign that I found during the season and some of the experiences some of the sits um, I've got some places that I hunted kind of off the cuff on the fly mobile hunting that I want to go back now and prep full time um, both at my lease and on some other areas that I have access to where you can legally prep trees so I'm going to kind of show you today the tools that I use um, and kind of go over how I personally prep trees so a big thing is I usually can't get more than one or two trees done in a day because I'm working by myself and I also since during the summertime when I'm prepping it's so very very hot I don't work past about 10 o'clock so I'll try to get out there at about daybreak um, and I'll try to work till about 10 o'clock and then I'll break for lunch go home and catch up on my honeydews um, but when I go just kind of show you what I usually take uh, this is my pack this is the same pack that I hunt with um, it's got my compass always I don't know if you can see that ball compass hanging on that strap and it's also got my doors built in so I've got a carabiner um, so this pack I don't I don't take a lot of stuff in it I'll have a hydration bladder or some water bottles and snacks um, I do always take a limb saw a bug spray um, and then I always because we do have ticks I always try to keep my clothes um, coated with uh, permethrin. Uh, I'll take pruners. Uh, what else we got in here? That's really about it. The only other thing is um, this is what's left over from last weekend when I went out. This is just grade eight, you know, six inch uh, bolts. And that's what I'm usually prepping my trees with. That's very economical. You can get them for you know south of a dollar a piece. Uh, um, but I'll, I'll carry that in on my back with my goodies in it and then I take my saddle um, In the saddle I usually keep trail tacks I'll keep ribbon um, And then of course I've got my tree hopper drill Y'all who haven't seen it. This is the new mini that Mark's putting out It's real easy to use. So this is what I'm using even though you can some people like use power drill uh, when they're prepping trees since I'm not doing more than one or two it's it's to me it's just not worth the weight carrying it um, but this is what I'm using I'm using my saddle kind of as a lineman's belt and a safety harness and uh, it works out pretty well I'm used to wearing it I can wear it very comfortably in uh, some other big ticket items that I'll take down here uh, a good machete really comes in handy I've had this forever this is an Ontario military issue machete um, you can see it needs a little coat of rust on it and need to sharpen it back up but that's a real good heavy duty machete that's going to do a lot better than the little ten dollar specials you see at the hardware store um, a lot of our stuff especially now you can just about sit out on a quiet night and you can almost hear plants grow uh, so a lot of that growth is really soft it's real green and it's real easy just to beat a trail with a machete so if i'm cutting a trail to a stand uh, if i'm cutting shooting lanes that works really well uh, thicker woodier stuff if I can't get it with my hand saw something I started using this past season and I've loved it loved it loved it the electric chainsaw um, so you're not gonna get a lot of really super heavy-duty cutting done with it um, but it's pretty lightweight and you can see it instantly starts there's no jerk jerking on ropes there's no worrying with fuel mixtures there's no fuel in your backpack or anything you can one-handed now what I like to do sometimes, if I get up in a tree, if I'm prepping a tree, uh, I do not climb around limbs. I usually just cut them and try to go high. Um, I don't really want cover on a prep tree. I just would like to be high up in the air because um, I don't want to try to maneuver a lineman's belt over and around stuff. I might leave some limbs at height for some cover, um, but generally I trim them. And uh, you know, you get a get a big limb that you want to go. That just makes everything a lot easier. Um, I can clip it into my doors hoist I can clip that carabiner and carry it up pretty safely lower it back down when I'm done with it that works phenomenally um, you know and it's good too a lot of times when you get up in a tree 
Um, I'll try to climb up the tree and sit where I need to be. And since I'm working by myself, you kind of have to make a mental note of what needs to go. A lot of times, it's very easy when you get back on the ground to take that. And you can knock out pretty much everything in your shooting lane that's less than about three or four inches in diameter. Um, and just cut the tree and all the branches on it at one fell swoop. Especially if I'm on my lease and I'm not worried really about you know, being low impact and, and leave no trace and trying to keep other people from finding my spots. Uh, that's when I really break out the ribbons and the trail tacks and the chainsaw and, you know, create a very easy to follow trail, cut very broad, easy to shoot shooting lanes. Um, if I'm hunting public, I try to be a little little stealthier. Um, honestly, I don't, I don't trim much at all, even where it is legal. A lot of places you can't legally cut stuff. Uh, so you just kind of have to live with it and even in places where you can cut stuff if there's other people hunting it um, a hunting lease or something like that a hunting club that you're sharing with other members i'll just leave it as is um now obviously that machete it usually goes with me uh here lately the chainsaw's been going with me uh if i think i'll need it and then something that i'll take as well the uh handy dandy pole saw with the uh the limb loppers on it so Obviously, I can't carry the chainsaw, the limb loppers, and the machete and everything all in there with me at one go, so I do kind of pick and choose, um, but I usually have all this in my truck. Uh, so basically, you know, what it what it looks like last weekend, I was up there prepping. I got up to my lease about the time the sun went up, got up early, fueled up, checked all my equipment, uh, you know, stopped and got a Hardy's biscuit on the way up there, listened to the radio, pretty relaxing. Um, get up there. And I've usually got a few spots in mind. Um, what I'll do is I'll get out there and as I'm walking in, uh, I, I, I will generally try to get to the area, um, find out exactly which tree I want to be in. I will prep that tree. I will put some shooting lanes going out in any direction that I want. I usually always have at least two shooting lanes. Sometimes I'll have three or four going different directions so I can shoot all around the tree. Uh, but then I don't really mark my trails until I get ready to go out because I'm usually marking that trail from a specific point and then I'm tying back into a pre-existing road somewhere and I'll try to cut as straight of a trail as I can. Um, I've always got my compass on me so it's very easy to get a bearing and keep it not get turned around and then I'm also using my phone with hunt stand. I'll drop a pin at the tree and as I'm walking out um, I try to walk as straight a line as I possibly can um, if I'm on my lease, I'm marking it with ribbon and reflective tacks pretty heavily so I can go straight to it when I come back to hunt it in the season. But then I'm also leaving a breadcrumb trail on the way out. Um, if I'm hunting public land, that's all I do is leave a breadcrumb trail. I might leave a trail tack here or there. But what I'm mainly going on is, you know, my turnoff point from a trail or if I'm coming in by water, the creek or river that I'm coming in on, I try to keep that as straight as possible. So that it's easy to go on a compass bearing um, very easy to get to my stuff my tree what i'll usually do is i'll mark it with three tacks and a triangle and i do this public private whatever um, once i get through drilling the tree placing my grade a bolts in um, i'll come down and right at about head height six feet for me i'll put three tacks okay and uh, the reason i do three and you kind of angle them is it makes it easier if you come in that tree from an angle you're still going to be able to see a tack and since there's three of them if something were to happen um, and one of those tacks were to come off you've still got the other two where you can see um, so I always leave three three tacks in as big a triangle as the tree circumference will allow me um, that's basically it like I said I get about tre two trees done per day um, so far I've already got two of those knocked out um, I've probably got another seven or eight trees that I'm going to prep on my lease this year. Um, got one tree that I killed a, killed my nine point off of. I'm definitely going to go back there. Um, the lease has really changed. Uh, some of the presets that I already had set up, I'm going to have to redo them or, or move them or they're not good anymore because they just uh, they actually thinned our lease. Um, so we got a 120 acre lease that's all planted pines and they thinned it and they left some skitter trails and stuff like that. So for late rut gun season you got some really nice shooting lanes that i want to go ahead and capitalize on so i'm kind of having to put some new trees up um, but that's it usually ironically prepping the tree taking the hand drill is the easy part um, that that usually even if i got to cut limbs that usually is about a 10 20 minute endeavor 
uh, cutting the shooting lanes is usually where the bulk of your time goes. This makes that a lot easier. Um, that these, these two tools right here, I mean, you can really cut a shooting lane quickly um, with that. It's a lot better than trying to use a handsaw and pruners. I highly, highly recommend if you cut a lot of shooting lanes, um, if you do a lot of prep work, it's, it's worth picking up. Uh, that chainsaw battery, it will last. It doesn't last as long as obviously a one gallon can of gas will. Um, but it's it's a lot cleaner and it will that that battery will last longer than I do. I'll be tired of it and ready to go home before my battery gives out. Um, but yeah, that that's about it for you guys who are looking to uh, kind of get out there and prep your spots. It makes it a lot easier opening day when you've got you know ten or twelve trees ready to go on a hundred acre lease. And just depending on what the wind's doing and what you feel like hunting that morning, you just walk out with your saddle on. You don't have to bring a platform. You don't have to bring a ring of steps. You just leave five or six bolts around the base of the tree you wear that you carry your weapon and uh you can be up a tree in 30 seconds tethered in and ready to hunt so y'all check it out we'll talk to you next week